If you use Google Sheets for project management, managing your social media content, or even financial transactions, you're going to love this new feature. Google just released a feature called Tables, and this is going to provide you a better way to visualize and structure your data. Now, Google has been pushing this feature hard, so probably when you create a new spreadsheet, you're going to see this option over on the side that pops up to create a table. If you don't see that in the sidebar, you can go to format and convert this to a table. We'll be able to hover over several different featured use cases and you can get an idea for which one you might want to use. For this example today, we're gonna to take a look at project tasks. So let's go ahead and insert this. And right away, you'll notice that this is much more visually appealing. Now we've got our different columns and for each of these, we have a column type and it's telling us what kind of data to put in which is much better than looking at a blank canvas of a spreadsheet. Let's take a look at the different kinds of column types that we have. So if we click on this drop down next to any of our columns, we can see this option to edit our column type. And you can see that we've got several different options to choose from. And this is going to look a little bit similar to if you went to format and you could see the different options. You're not gonna have as many options here, but these are going to be probably the key ones that you would use if you want to format data as a table. And over here we have dates, our start date and end date. So as you'd expect, those are going to be dates. Google's been investing a lot in their smart chips. And so this is an example of a smart chip where we can see that this is attached to people. People's probably the most common type of smart chip that you'll utilize, but you can do it for things like files and places as well. So here, if we're using a smart chip, I can say, who is the task owner? Ah, in this case, I'm the task owner. And so we can actually have that information and we can hover over it and see some of that contextual information about the person that we've assigned this task to. Over here under deliverables, this file is another type of smart chip. And so when we click it, we can choose from different documents that we have inside of our Google Drive. And of course, we'll be able to have drop downs as well. We can modify those values by clicking on that pencil icon and we can change which values are available when you click that to drop down and select a value. So if I'm choosing a new one here, I can choose from those existing values. Now, one of the features I really like about this is having the ability to have a placeholder. It probably doesn't matter as much for something like tasks, having it say task, 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 but for something like dates where we want the user to input a date and maybe we're telling them what kind of format, here when we edit the column type, we can say show placeholders. If you prefer a cleaner experience, you can uncheck this and that's going to show blank. But I think oftentimes this is really helpful if we're trying to signal to our users what kind of data we want them to input. And because we have specific column types that we're utilizing, if we try to input text in say a date field, we're going to get a validation error. I fleshed out our data a little bit here so that we can play around with it a little bit. Let's say we wanna do something like add a new column to this. Well, we can click on one of our columns that we have on the drop down, and from here we could insert a new table column to the left or the right. Now, this is different than our standard columns. If we click over here on column K, which has nothing to do with our table, and we were to say insert a column, notice this is different than table column because within one spreadsheet, you might have a table and then you have data that exists outside of that table. So the best way to do this is by clicking and then inserting that table column. Now here, let's title this days to complete and we'll put in a formula. So I'm going to put in an array formula. So this is going to extend it down. I don't have to do this myself. And what's really cool about tables is that we can actually reference the table and the data that's stored in the columns themselves. So currently this is called project tasks two. I actually wanna update this name. So I'm gonna click it and we'll just change this to tasks. And now look, when I start typing the word tasks, I can automatically get access to my table data in a way that's similar to named ranges. So I don't have to say, look at B2. Instead, we can just talk about our data. This is our tasks table. And so we want to say, let's take the end date. And now we're going to subtract or find the difference. And I'm gonna type in our start date. I don't even have to write tasks here. I can just type in start date. Automatically, this pulls up those relevant fields. And then let's close our parentheses here. And boom, we've got the number of days. I guess this is pretty boring ChatGPT data. They all took exactly seven days. But now we've got that formula applied across our whole table. So what options can we do at the table level itself? Well, we relabeled this to begin with. But if we click, we've got a couple additional options. We can adjust the range if we want to include additional data that was not initially included in our table. We've got this option to turn on or off alternating colors. I'm not sure how cleanly this comes through because it's pretty light here, but we don't have to manually say we want it to alternate 
white, and then gray. It's doing this for us just to make this more visually appealing, easy to see, but we could turn that off if we wanted to. We can also customize our table color. So this is what we're going to see across the header. In this case, maybe I'll change it to blue. We could revert to unformatted data if we don't actually want all that formatting that we did, but this gets rid of the power of tables. So we probably don't want to do that. And we could delete the table altogether if we wanted to. What's really nice is if you click on a column, you can do other things like you can filter by the values on that column or you could group by that column. We're actually going to do this at the view level here. And so you can see you've got the option to create a group by view. In this case, let's say we want to group this by owner so that we can see who is in charge of each task. Maybe we're doing some kind of daily standup and we want to see who's the owner and we'll go through each person's tasks. If we wanted to, we could also add a filter to this. So maybe I only want to see my tasks that are blocked and not the other ones. And so we can still see this grouped by, but only show those blocked tasks. Now, this right now is just a temporary view. It allows us to be able to change the way in which we look at our data. But this might be something that you want to actually save that people can refer back to again. So we can save this view and we'd want to give it a descriptive name, something like blocked tasks by owner. We can save that. So now at any point, if we want to recall that view, we've been looking at all of our data. We want to see blocked tasks by owner. We could click on that again. And now we've got that same view. Well, what if we have a meeting on our team just about our block tasks? Well, then it would probably make sense to take that view. And we've got these view options. We can actually get the link to that view. So now we could share this link with our team and they are seeing the exact same view of that data that we are when this is on the screen. Well, for those of you who regularly watch our channel, you might be asking a question like, well, can I just use Google Sheets instead of Airtable or SmartSuite? And the part that's still not a part of this is even though we have tables, it's still not a relational database. If we have tasks and we want to link those tasks to our company accounts, we're doing tasks on behalf of other companies, or we want them linked to other contacts in our system, it's still really not the same. You can, of course, force some drop down options. You can have some series of lookups, but it's really not the same. I wouldn't use this in place of a relational database or a work management tool, but I think there's going to be lots of one-off use cases where this just makes Google Sheets much easier to use. I'm curious to hear how you're going to use this new tables feature. If you have any questions about your own automation setup for your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.